Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. I got another part in my cut content series for you. In this one, I want to talk about the Cataclysm expansion. There are quite a few things that just didn't make it into this expansion. Not as much as Draenor, but still a fair amount. So, I'll show you what I consider to be the biggest ones. These will be things that are fairly concrete, meaning that they were teased or previewed by Blizzard at some point. This expansion was when things were starting to slow down raid and dungeon wise. If you compare them to the previous expansions, the Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King had 16 dungeons each and 8 and 9 raids respectively. Cataclysm clocked in at 14 dungeons and just 6 raids due to some cuts, so let's get into it. First up, let's talk about the Abyssal Ma. This one was all over the place. It was initially announced to be a 5 man dungeon to accompany the Throat of the Tides instance in Vashir, but it was later suggested that it would be a raid before it was scrapped altogether. The Abyssal Ma is one of the elemental planes. To give you a brief reminder, Cataclysm had several of these elemental planes. Deepholm was Earth, Skywall was Air, although we only got access to instances within it, such as the Vortex Pinnacle, and of course the Firelands was the Fire Plane. Each of these planes have elemental lords that were banished by the Titans. Ragnaros for Fire, Therizane for Earth, Thunderon for Wind, and Neptulon for Water. It was announced that the Abyssal Ma would be added in the first major content patch, 4.1, but when it wasn't in that, it was speculated to be pushed back to patch 4.2 along with the Firelands. Eventually though, it was abandoned with Blizzard putting all of their focus onto the Fire Plane. Their reason for this was that they were satisfied with the Throne of the Tides instance and said that it was a good ending to the Vashir storyline. Which is weird because it ends on a cliffhanger. For the final boss of that instance, he had to protect the Water Elemental Lord Neptulon from waves of faceless enemies. These are eldritch manifestations of the Old Gods. You also had to fend off the Kraken Patriarch, Azumat, who is supposedly under the Old God's command. You're successful in the battle, however, Azumat kidnaps Neptulon. Neptulon is a pretty important character. He was one of the big four elemental lords. These were the beings who ruled Azeroth even before the Old Gods came. So, the quote-unquote good ending to the Vashir storyline didn't exist because there was no ending. It was something that was clearly left open to return to at a later date. World of Warcraft's lead system designer, Ghostcrawler, later wrote a blog stating the real reason why it was abandoned. He said that they thought that most players were ready to be done with Vashir and the whole water thing by the time they finished questing there. They had the option of adding on to the water thing or putting their focus on something new, the Firelands. They felt that the Abyssal Ma was going to pale in comparison, so it was dropped. Speculation was that it was actually going to wrap up the storyline with what happened to Neptulon and where he was taken, and that it would have something to do with the Old Gods, particularly Nazoth. Nazoth is the water old god who has an octopus-like appearance, perhaps the one responsible for Neptulon's capture. There's been some rumblings about him during the Legion expansion, even being name-dropped by the Ilganoth boss fight in the Emerald Nightmare, but I think it's very possible that we could have seen him much earlier. The Abyssal Ma could have been a water raid with Faceless Ones and other old god minions in it, including Azumat or maybe even Nazoth himself. He speculated to have corrupted the Black Dragon aspect Neltharion into Deathwing, which led to the events of the whole Cataclysm expansion. He supposedly also has connections with Queen Ashara, someone else who's fairly active in Legion. It's thought that he's the one who transformed her and her Highborn into Naga, so the two go hand in hand. This brings us to number two, and that's the War of the Ancients raid. The War of the Ancients was the Burning Legion's first invasion of Azeroth. Queen Ashara, who was the leader of the Highborn Elves at the time, granted entrance to Azeroth for Sargeras and the Burning Legion, also known as the War of the Ancients. The bigger named belligerents were Illidan and Malfurion Stormrage, Tyrant Whisperwind, the Dragon Aspects, Archimond, Manoroth, Hakkar, Xavius, Queen Ashara, and more. The inhabitants of Azeroth were eventually successful, but it was only after the event known as the Sundering. This was back when everything was one big landmass, with something known as the Well of Eternity in the middle. This was a font of arcane power, and at the end of the war, it exploded, fracturing the lands into many pieces, the Eastern Kingdoms, Kalimdor, Northrend, and more. This raid would have thrown us into the war, and let us see firsthand what happened. And it would of course be in the Caverns of Time with all of the other time-traveling dungeons and raids. Six months prior to the game's launch, game director Tom Chilton announced in an interview that there were plans for a War of the Ancients raid. But time passed and there was no information about the status of this raid. That is until patch 4.3 where we got the Well of Eternity 5-man dungeon. In this one, you aid Illidan Stormrage and Tyrand Whisperwind in their battle against Queen Ashara when she was still a Night Elf. And with no information about the actual raid, this dungeon was seen as the death blow of it having any chances of it happening this expansion, and unfortunately, it was the case. For number 3, we have the Path of the Titans character progression system. This was going to be unlocked once you hit the max level, 85, and it would allow you to customize your character a bit. There were going to be 6 different cults dedicated to the Titans, Agrimar, Aeonar, Amanthul, Kazgoroth, Golganath, and Norganon. 
You may recognize some of these names from the Pillars of Creation artifacts you've been collecting in Legion. You would be able to pick one of these cults, and each one had different bonuses. Golgonath focused on defense, ANR was healing, etc. The interface was very similar to the glyph system, although it had nothing to do with inscription. There were different tiers of glyphs you could obtain that give you better bonuses the higher the tier was. For example, a rank 1 Golgoneth tier glyph was a 4% reduction in physical damage taken, and at rank 2, you could get an ability that reduces damage taken by you and your allies for a short duration. It was going to be tied with the archaeology profession, where you collect special titan artifacts and unlock these abilities and further your standing with the cult. You could progress down the paths themselves by doing a variety of things, raiding, dungeons, PvP, questing, crafting, etc. Very similar to the way you level up your artifact weapon, actually. And after you maxed everything out, your character was supposed to be about 20% stronger than they normally would. They said the reason it was scrapped was because it didn't feel different enough from the glyph system they had at the time. Right now, the glyphs are just cosmetic and quality of life things, but back then, they brought actual enhancements to your character. So, the Path of the Titans would be just another version of it. The archaeology profession ended up being a casualty of this cancellation, and you just grinded out dig sites for a bit of lore and some bind on account gear, and a few mounts and pets here and there. But, as I'm sure you noticed, it does share some resemblance with their current artifact system. You have paths you go down, some nodes provide minor bonuses and others more substantial, and like I mentioned, the way you leveled it was similar in the sense that you could do it in several different ways. So, we did get an echo of it, although it took quite a while. And lastly for number 4, we have the Battle for Gilneas City Battleground. You may know about the Battle for Gilneas Battleground. This is a 10 vs 10 resource race, similar to the Arathi Basin. Well, it was originally planned to be set in the actual city of Gilneas, where the goal was to capture the most districts. Gilneas is one of the seven human kingdoms, and up until Cataclysm, it was walled off. If you went through the initial leveling process for Worgen, you would know that Gilnea City was besieged by the Forsaken. So, this battleground would have been a fight between the Horde and the Lions for control over Gilneas using that district capture mode, most likely a 40 vs 40 due to the sheer size of the city. But, the feedback from internal testing deemed it to be quote unquote unsalvageable, so they turned it into the mini Arathi Basin we have today. So, that's about it, for all of the major stuff anyways. There are some other things, but nothing that got off the ground in a big way, as far as I know anyways. There is also speculated to be a storyline with C'Thun in the Silithus zone, as players were getting whispers from him in the alpha, but nothing too concrete. I think if we had those raids though, it would have been a much more memorable expansion. Like I mentioned earlier, the Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King expansions had 8 and 9 raids each. Having just 6 is pretty low in comparison, but hey, at least it wasn't 3 like in Draenor. That's about all I have to talk about though. I've been doing videos like this for every expansion. So far, I have this and Draenor covered, so if you're interested in this sort of stuff, let me know what expansion you'd like to see next, and I'll look into it to see if there's anything video worthy. Anyways, I hope you found the video entertaining. Like it if you liked it, and thanks for watching. Peace.